everybody, Dio really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki Zoisoroku. We are along Chikage Kazuma's route, reading Memories of Love, Part 2 and 3, and apparently in this he gets shafted too, just like the main game, because uh, he has a short route in the main game, and every other character in, the, well, the main characters in this game get eight parts, but he only gets five. But ratio-wise, I guess that's still more material than he actually got compared to the guys in the main story, so... At least it's something. I don't know. I gotta study up and see if there's extras for him and Kyoto wins, but I don't think so. I don't think they change much, if anything, as far as the old characters in that go. But I will look into it, rest assured. Anyway, let's start with Kazuma Memories of Love Part 2. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Memories of Love Kazuma 2 January 1868 The protagonist sets off toward Edo with Kazuma, Following the footsteps of the Shinsengumi, when the protagonist begins to tire visibly, Kazuma insists they stop. They rest in the nearby deserted house and the protagonist asks him to tell her more about demons. Tell me more about myself. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Demons, Shinsengumi, were all only pebbles in the avalanche. Wise words. All we are is dust in the wind. As he spoke, he gazed out over the war-torn Kyoto, Spires of smoke dotted the city, like skeletal fingers reaching down from the sky. Perhaps he too felt conflicted about the outbreak of violence. The crack of gunshots echoed through the city, and the flames of the fires rose higher. I stared in disbelief as rebel troops raised the imperial battle standard to drive out the shogunate soldiers. From that point forward, the Shinsengumi would be considered traitors to the imperial court. January 1868 War between the men loyal to the former shogunate and those allied with the Satsuma and Choshu began in earnest. As members of the first group, the Shinsengumi were tasked with protecting the Fushimi magistrate's office. Unfortunately, they had been forced to retreat by the western weapons and tactics of the attacking force. During the chaos of battle, I had found myself separated from them. After losing my way in the forest, I came under attack by a group of deserters. As luck would have it, however, Kazuma happened by and saved me. Lucky me! So long as the rebels carried the imperial battle standard, there was no hope of victory for the troops loyal to the shogunate. In Kazuma's estimation, the Shinsengumi would likely be defeated in Osaka and then head for Edo. I agreed, so we made our way to Edo as well, in hopes of reuniting with them. Always a step behind. But we didn't go alone. After I expressed some concerns, Sen arranged for Amagiri to accompany us as well. Who really needs a route? The longer I was with them, the more I realized that I knew next to nothing about Kazuma and his demon kin. Still in denial, apparently. His demon kin, not mine. I pushed to move forward quickly, even as I struggled to deal with my worry for the Shinsengumi and my discomfort with the demons. Several days outside of Kyoto, we found ourselves deep inside the forest. I feel like with this fan disc material, she's way more in denial about herself as a demon than she was in the main game. Memories of Love, Part 2 January, 1868 I heard the wind rustle the leaves moments before I felt it brush against my cheek. We were on our way past Tokaido. I wonder if they're safe. Had they managed to reunite after Fushimi and head for Edo together? Suddenly I realized that my nervousness had sped up my pace. In the night, branches smacked against my skin as I moved, but I didn't care. Perhaps you ought to calm yourself. If you continue like this, you'll tire too quickly. He is correct. This part of the forest has no paths. Traversing it is difficult enough. We had chosen to avoid the main roads through Tokaido, which meant going through the woods. Tokaido was under the influence of forces loyal to the Shogun, which meant Kazuma was in enemy territory. Moving off the beaten path ensured we would avoid unnecessary fights. I understand your urgency, but at this time it will gain you nothing save exhaustion. Thank you for your concern, Amagiri. But if I want to catch up to the Shinsengumi, I have to hurry. Carry me! I knew he was right, but I couldn't bring myself to slow down. Before I could continue, Kazuma's side cut me off. It's time we stopped. Amagiri, find us a suitable location for resting. Of course. Fortune has smiled on us. I have spotted what appears to be a house not far from here. It should serve our needs. W wait! Shouldn't we try and get a little further? I could care less what you want. I'm tired. That means it's time to rest. End of story. I seriously doubt you're tired. 
Besides, look at yourself. You can barely move. <laughs> Further, she says. <sighs> he was right, of course. Perhaps it was because of the darkness or the rough path, but my feet felt heavy and each step was a struggle. Good, I'm glad you understand. Now, come along. Okay. I sighed and turned to follow them. I shall obey. As it turned out, house was a generous way to describe the building on Magiria found. Hovel is more like it. Nonetheless, it was covered in dust and showed no signs of having been inhabited for a very long time. Well, at least it means, uh, nobody's gonna discover us. Um, is it really okay for us to just break in? Break in? That's kind of a term reserved for a place that somebody lives in. Whatever the shack was built for, it's clear it no longer serves that, or indeed any, purpose. I doubt anyone will care or know if we rest here. Agreed. It is hardly pleasant to look at, but at least it has beds. We ought to be thankful that it is here. After a quick examination of the interior, Amagiri turned to leave. Wait, where are you going? Oh, <laughs> just like I said, where are you going? You're going to leave me here alone with Kazuma at nighttime? Forces loyal to the shogunate control the area. Forewarned is forearmed. I guess he trusts Kazuma. I will stand guard while the two of you take respite. Ah, standing guard. Huh? W wait! Not going to take turns? But he was gone. <laughs> he was leaning over the hearth, which seemed as unused as the rest of the house. Uh... <laughs> I couldn't find anything to talk about, so I kept silent. I thought we were just gonna go to sleep. Why are we sitting here? Awkwardly. Apparently, he felt similarly. Uh. The silence was becoming uncomfortable, so I looked around the room for something to distract me. I still felt uncomfortable breaking into someone's home, but... Mostly, I felt uncomfortable being alone with Kazuma and a house in the middle of the forest. What's wrong? You seem uncomfortable. Well, I am here with a man who uh, tried to kidnap me several times and wants to turn me into a broodmother. Uh, oh, no. Uh, anyway, um, what were you doing over there? Isn't it obvious? Starting a fire. It is winter. I'm a giri and I will be fine, but I suspect you might require warmth. Well, I don't need a fire for that. Can't I just cuddle up next to you? Y you're building a fire just for me? How considerate. Huh. Now that I thought back, though, they had been the ones to insist we stop, even though they didn't seem tired in the least. Yep, consideration. Were they that concerned about me? No. The image I'd built of them in my head did not leave a lot of room for kindness or consideration. Melia well, had the wrong idea. It was especially strange to see Kazuma acting that way. Well, he's easily misunderstood. Why are you making that face? Here, come sit by the fire. Oh, oh okay. I shuffled over toward the fire and sat down. Oh, so beautiful. When I glanced over at him, I could see the flickering orange light of the fire dancing across his face. As I watched, I thought about how, beyond his face, I knew almost nothing about Kazuma and the other demons. To me, they had only been figures who appeared occasionally to stand in the way of the Shinsengumi, and to attempt to capture me. What were they like as people? Where did they come from? It wasn't just Kazuma and Amagiri either. I knew nothing about what demons even were. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's Sen and Kimigiku and Shiranoi. Kazuma, could you tell me about demons? What sort of question is that? Well, if what you and Sen have told me is true, then I'm a demon too, right? I don't really feel like one, though. And until I met you, I didn't even know demons existed. I still don't really understand what they... we are. Ha, huh, finally, she said, we... So, I think it's only natural to want to know more about you and Amagiri. I forced myself not to turn away. After a moment or two of silence, Kazuma's face turned until his scarlet eyes were looking directly into mine. I don't know where demons come from or why they chose to settle in this country. The history between mankind and demonkind was a contentious one, he continued, marked by constant strife and conflict. Each individual demon far surpassed any human in terms of strength, speed, and durability. But they were few in number, and no matter their strength, humans always outnumbered them. 
That was why the demon clans chose to disappear and live in isolation, away from the human world. They had taken to remote areas and lived peaceful lives. They say there were some who refused to hide and took the fight to the humans. They were killed eventually. Were those the demons you hear about in legends? I'm sure I couldn't say, but in all likelihood, yes. What had gone through the minds of those ancient demons as they chose to withdraw from the rest of the world and go into hiding? Probably despair. Kazuma's story had given me more questions than answers, though. But first, I wanted to know... Why he opposed the Shinsengumi. So, you said that the demons went into hiding, right? So, why were you and your friends fighting with the Satsuma and Choshu against the Shogunate and the Shinsengumi? If they really were trying to stay in hiding, it seemed like a bad idea. Kazuma's eyes narrowed. I guess we hadn't talked about that in, at this point yet. There is no longer any place in this country that humans cannot reach. What? He explained that in the past, numerous lords had clashed in civil wars as each tried to expand his domain. As the warlords pushed outward, the demon communities were discovered. Once humans realized what demons were capable of, they were pressed into service by human lords, desperate to gain any possible advantage over their rivals. Perhaps the best example would be the Battle of Sekigahara. S sekigahara You mean the battle between the Tokugawa and Toyotomi? No, the other Sekigahara. Yes, of course that one. <laughs> Gotta love his sarcasm. Demons usually care a little for human concerns, but they join the war in hopes that they could win back a peaceful existence. Your clan sided with the Tokugawa in the east, while mine and Amagiris chose the west. History was quite clear on who had won at Sekigahara, the Tokugawa of the east. Their family had founded the shogunate and prospered as rulers of Japan for two centuries. My family had, of course, been protected by their alliance. So, so what happened to the clan who fought on the losing side? Some of the lords felt that we still had value. We were sheltered by various western domains. The Satsuma looked after the Kazuma, and the Choshu took in the Shiranui. In that way, two hundred years passed. The Western Domain protected the demons from the vengeance of those who had fought them at Sekigahara. So, you're working with the Satsuma and Choshu to repay them for what they did? Correct. But this will be the last time we involve ourselves in mankind's wars. Our debt is more than paid. After all, the Shogun is all but destroyed. I looked away. That meant the Shinsengumi was... <sighs> we both stared at the fire as it hissed and crackled in the hearth. There was much more I wanted to ask him, but... Questions were all well and good, but we will be departing early tomorrow morning. You should turn in. Yes, I suppose you're right. It was late, and I would need my sleep if we were going to make any decent progress. I was halfway to the futon when a sudden realization dawned on me. That it would be more comfortable to sleep next to Kazuma? W wait you mean I should sleep here? Uh, where else? Uh, yeah. <laughs> where else would you prefer to sleep outside? W well, no, but... The world outside the shack was completely silent. I couldn't even hear the soft noises of birds or insects. Amagiri wasn't likely to return, which meant that the only people sleeping there would be Kazuma and myself. Yeah, well, you're the only two people here right now if he wanted to do anything. He could without you sleeping. We were quite alone. Is something wrong? I thought you were going to sleep. Uh, I know. That had been my intent, but he was a man, and despite my clothing, I was still a woman. I felt sleeping in the same small room as a man, who was still effectively a stranger, was cause for at least a little trepidation. I needed to be careful. Hmm. In the most dignified manner I could manage, I dragged my bed across the room to the other side of the hearth. <laughs> Kazuma watched me with amusement. <laughs> yeah, I thought he would be amused by that. Ah, uh, I thought you were acting oddly. No, I see. <laughs> well, I think it's perfectly justified. Like it's going to make any difference, though. <laughs> it was maddening that he found my nervousness so entertaining. Then, with a grin, he spoke. You were hoping I might pay you a visit? <laughs> yeah, I was, actually. Uh, of course not! I could feel my face turn scarlet, but Kazuma just slumped back, almost disappointed. Oh, don't give me that look. 
It was only a joke. Do you take me for some manner of brute? Apparently, she does. Demons respect formality and tradition. You can rest assured I will not touch you until we are wed. Aww. Until we're what? Oh, come on, don't say that. You know his intent. Just go to sleep. You should rest while you can. Uh, okay. His tone was unexpectedly kind. He's a courtin' ya. I still didn't trust him entirely, but I didn't think he was a liar either. Besides, he was quite correct I needed to rest. I would need all my energy to catch up to the Shin... Sen... Gumi. Guess I fell asleep. I snapped awake. I felt as if I'd only been asleep for a few minutes, if that. Ah, oh, I hate that. Then you don't feel rested at all. Kazuma did not seem to have moved since I closed my eyes. And he has nothing to say. But there was a beam of bright sunlight coming in through the window, and I could hear the morning chirping of birds. Is... is it morning? How could we possibly tell? Up already. As soon as Amagiri returns, we'll be leaving. My body felt better, even if I was rather disoriented. I rubbed the sleep from my eyes and sat up. Did... did you sleep? A little. He wasn't an especially good liar. <laughs> I suspected he had been up all night tending the fire. Why? Did it really need tending all night? Thanks. His eyes widened just slightly, and for a moment he stared at me. Just hurry and get ready to leave. He stood up and stalked outside. Kazuma was unfriendly and selfish, and I'd never seen him show mercy to an enemy. He was definitely frightening. But I was beginning to think he wasn't an evil person under all that. Uh, I hadn't felt this way since I was separated from the Shinsengumi, but... I found myself smiling. <laughs> uh, awake already. You seem pleased. Did something pleasant happen? Are you hoping for something to blossom between Kazuma and I? Yeah, I guess so. You were keeping watch all night, right? Thanks. He nodded in assent and I bowed in return. Now that the day had begun, though, it was time to focus on the goal at hand. Catching up to the Shinsengumi. No easy task. Apparently, they move fast. Okay, and I know it was just one, but that seemed kind of a little bit long, so I'm going to cut the video there. Especially since Kazuma has so few videos, and maybe I just made a lot of mistakes in that reading, but this recording is a little long already. So I hope you'll forgive me for that, and we will have the next episode or two of Kazuma in the next video. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.